So you're at a festival and it's getting really rowdy. Your friend has gone to grab some drinks and you've lost sight of him. Suddenly, his voice sounds loud and clear in your ears, asking what drink he should get for you. Now, are we in a sci-fi movie or what? No, apparently that's what scientists can do now. They've made a sound that can travel through space and reach just your ears in a crowd. Researchers conducted a new study and found a way to make tiny pockets of sound stay in one place. These pockets don't spread around like normal sound, and it means we can now create sound exactly where we want it, like sending it only to one person in a room. This discovery might totally change the way we enjoy music, talk to people, or experience sound in games and virtual spaces. You see, sound is just vibration moving through the air in waves. When something moves back and forth, it pushes and pulls the air. That movement creates sound waves. The speed of these waves is called frequency. If this frequency is low, we hear a deep sound, like a bass drum. When the frequency is high, it produces a sharp sound like a whistle. Wee-hee! Now, at the same time, it's hard to control where sound goes because of something called diffraction. This just means that sound waves like to spread out as they move. This is even worse with low deep sounds, which have long waves and are harder to keep in one place. Some devices like parametric speakers can send sound in one direction, like a beam. Even then, the sound is still heard along the whole path. It doesn't stay in one spot. But now, researchers have actually figured out how to do that using something called ultrasound and a special trick called nonlinear acoustics. Now, ultrasound is a sound that's too high pitched for people to hear. Anything above 20,000 Hz or 20 kHz. Even though we can't hear it, it still travels through the air like a regular sound. It's used in things like medical scans, for example, ultrasound imaging, and in some industrial tools. So in their research, scientists use ultrasound to carry normal sound. They made ultrasound waves move through the air quietly, and the actual sound only became audible right where they wanted it to. Now, Usually, sound waves just add up when they meet. That's called linear behavior. Nothing special happens, the sounds just mix together. But when sound waves are strong enough, they can act differently. They combine in a nonlinear way, which can create new sounds that weren't there before. Using this knowledge, the researchers took two ultrasound beams, each at a different high frequency. By themselves, these beams were totally silent. But when they met in space, they mixed in this nonlinear way and created a brand new sound wave that we could hear. And that sound only appears in the spot where the beams cross. Normally, sound travels in straight lines unless it bounces off of something. But researchers use special materials called acoustic metasurfaces. It allowed them to bend those ultrasound beams as they move, kind of like how glasses bend light. By changing the timing of the waves really precisely, they can curve the sound around objects and make it reach an exact point like sending it around a corner and having it land right by your ear. Now, let's say they use one beam at 40 kHz and the other at 39.5 kHz. When these beams meet, they create a sound at the difference between those two, 0.5 kHz or 500 Hz, which is a frequency we can hear. But again, you only hear it right where those beams intersect. Everywhere else, silence. Even so, you could send sound straight to one person without headphones and not disturb anyone around them. Imagine walking through a museum and hearing an audio guide just for you. No headphones needed. Other people nearby could be listening to totally different information without any sound overlapping. In a library, students could listen to lessons without bothering the person next to them. In a car, this tech could let passengers listen to music while the driver hears only the GPS directions. Aw, oh, man! In offices, it could create small zones where people could have private conversations without being overheard. It could also work the other way around, by canceling noise in a certain spot to make things quieter. This could help people concentrate better at work or even reduce noise in busy cities. Now, this isn't something you'll be able to buy just yet. There are still some challenges. For one thing, the sound quality can get a bit distorted because of how the ultrasound waves interact. 
Also, turning ultrasound into sound you can hear takes a lot of energy, which makes it less efficient right now. Still, the idea of creating audio bubbles is absolutely fantastic. It's not the only recent invention that explores sound. How about AI headphones that allow you to focus on just one voice? You might say that these days, we already have noise-canceling headphones that can block out sound, but you really don't get to choose what to focus on or when. But researchers from the University of Washington have come up with a smart solution. They've built a system called Target Speech Hearing that works with AI and headphones. You just look at the person you want to hear for about 3-5 to five seconds, and the headphones will lock on to their voice. After that, the headphones block out all the other sounds around you and play only that person's voice in real time. And even if you're in a loud place or you walk around and aren't facing them anymore, it still works. The headphones aren't for sale yet, but the code is out there and others can experiment with it. Let's dive deeper into how it all works. You wear regular headphones that have built-in microphones. When you want to hear someone, you just press a button and look at them while they're speaking. The system figures out who you want to hear by measuring when their voice hits both microphones at the same time. There's a small margin of error, but it works pretty well. That sound is then sent to a small computer built into the headset. The AI software listens and learns the voice you've chosen. From that point on, the system keeps picking out that person's voice and playing it clearly to you, even if you're both moving around. The more that person talks, the better the system gets at recognizing and focusing on them. They tested this on 21 people, and on average, the sound of the selected voice was rated nearly twice as clear as the normal unfiltered sound. Now, right now, the system can only focus on one speaker at a time, and it has trouble if another loud voice is coming from the same direction. But if the sound isn't clear enough, you can just do another enrollment to help it improve. They're now working on making the text small enough to fit into earbuds and hearing aids. Scientists have also found that the human ear itself has hidden modes. Researchers at Yale University were just trying to figure out how our ears can pick up super quiet sounds, and in the process, they discovered a hidden way that the ear might handle low-frequency sounds. You know those deep, rumbling ones? It helps us hear better without getting overwhelmed by noise. Scientists think that the cochlea, which is the spiral-shaped part of the inner ear, might be using a whole set of low-frequency mechanical modes. Basically, when sound comes into your ear, it creates tiny vibrations that travel through the cochlea. Inside, little hairs on a membrane detect those vibrations and send signals to your brain so you can hear. The problem is that these vibrations can weaken as they travel, making sounds dull or quiet. Now, we already knew that certain parts of these hair cells can boost those signals with a well-timed kick to make the sounds clear, kind of like a built-in amplifier. But now, it looks like the ear has another trick up its sleeve. It can also tune and boost sound more broadly, especially for low-frequency sounds. And it does this without making up fake sounds or overreacting. New models show that the hair cells can work not just individually, but also in larger groups all at once. This lets the ear adapt and control how it processes vibrations. For lower pitch sounds, even big sections of the membrane in the cochlea can work together to keep the sound clear and avoid overwhelm in the system. This discovery might explain how we're able to hear such quiet low sounds in the first place. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.